In this video, I will talk about how to calculate the entropy from a probability distribution. This statement allows us to be more quantitative about the types of intuitive comparisons we saw in Chapter 2 of Dale and Bromberg. For example, we know that if all configurations of a polymer are equally likely, the polymer appears coiled because the number of coiled states outweighs the number of completely extended states. But exactly how much more likely? What about an intermediate set of configurations like this? What is the free energy difference we need to overcome to stretch the polymer? To get this, we need a quantitative relationship between the entropy and a probability distribution. J.W. Gibbs was the first to make an explicit connection between the entropy and a set of probabilities in 1878. People used this equation to work out the applications of statistical mechanics for 70 years, until in 1948, Claude Shen presented a formal proof that derives this entropy equation from simpler considerations. Shannon did this work while thinking about the information transfer and messages. Think of yourself on the receiving end. Before you receive any information, your uncertainty is maximized, namely any sensible combination of words in the language is possible. Let's call this collection message space. Based on your past experience, you estimate that some messages are more likely than others in message space. As you receive the message word by word, you gain information, and this causes the probability distribution to shift. This decreases your uncertainty about what the message is until you've narrowed it down to one statement with 100% probability and your uncertainty is zero. Shannon used three assumptions to derive a form of uncertainty that turned out to be just the Gibbs entropy. Number one, continuity. Uncertainty should be a continuous function of the probability distribution. Number two, monotonically increasing. If all things are equal, the uncertainty should increase when there are more options. Number three, composition. If you break a set of probabilities up into successive events, you should be able to recover the original uncertainty from a weighted sum of the individual uncertainties. Let's say, for example, you've narrowed a message down to three options. You can add branches to the decision tree and do a weighted sum to recover the same uncertainty, regardless of how you add additional branches. In this case, the weighted sum gives you a factor of one half because the split to the lower branch only occurs half the time. If you're interested, you can read the derivation of this form of uncertainty in Shannon's paper, A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Shannon's constant k sets the units that his uncertainty was measured in, and since he was interested in digital information, he thought of this in bits, whereas we measure entropy in units of Boltzmann's constant. Of course, this form of entropy satisfies statements made from the three postulates it was derived from, by construction. You can easily prove these statements, and I encourage you to do so as it's good practice with logarithms. Finally, let's look at a numerical example for the simplest case. Two possible outcomes. Since the probabilities add up to 100%, there is only one variable. You can see from this graph that the entropy is zero when one of the probabilities is zero and the other one is 100%. The graph also shows us that the entropy is maximized when the two probabilities are equal to 50%. This is a general property as any transformation of the probability distribution that makes the probabilities equal tends to increase entropy. That's all. Thank you.